Hey guys, Ben Nash from Pivot Wealth, and uh, today I'm bringing you money news in human words, um, talking about the tech market slump, the uh, disruption that we're seeing to the property market, some new crypto ETFs that are launching, and a bunch of interesting stuff that's been happening this week, helping you understand the key things that you need to know to take advantage of the opportunities that are out there and avoid some of the mistakes and issues that uh, that might hold you back. Before I get into the news, though, I just wanted to unpack the share market numbers for the week. So. Share market was really interesting last week. We saw um, the uh, interesting um, slash painful. Uh, we saw the markets pumped off the back of some of the inflation data that was coming up. Friday, um, the NASDAQ ended up down over 4%. That's a huge slide in one day terms. Um, and yeah, we're up there with some of the biggest losses that we've seen um, and sort of uh, quite variable throughout the week as well. Some days down 3%, some days up 3%. So pretty wild. Um, overall, the Aussie share market ended up 2.5% lower than last week. The S&P 500, so the 500 largest companies in America, finished the week down 2.18%. Uh, NASDAQ down 2.19%. And the Global All World Index um, ended up just down 1.74%. Uh, Crypto mega cap index down uh, 11 point six percent um for the at the back end of the month to date our investment story of the week is net centric they're a um, social media influence uh, uh marketing company globally they got big markets across asia and um like campaigns there they basically had a, a kick up of 20 percent on tuesday uh, thursday rather as a, as a result of some release of earnings data at the back end of the week and one that's definitely uh, to watch over the next little while. So looking at the news, look, one, um, one piece of news that caught my eye last week was around investors with cash at the bank losing uh, money in real terms. And I think this is a really, really big issue. Um, we're seeing, you know, inflation's running at 5%. We've got cash at the bank is earning you less than 1%, which means that your money's actually going backwards by 4% a year, which is a pretty significant slide in purchasing power terms. And when you think about the fact that investments are increasing in value at the same time, it means that you're really chasing your tail. So what that means for the end result is slower progress for investors. And sometimes that frustration or fear or FOMO, the psychology side of things can push you to make bad investment choices. And then you end up losing even more money. The really big frustration though, is that when you don't know, um, you want to invest, but don't know what to do. You've worked hard to save up this cash. So you don't want to you don't want to end up doing something silly that's going to cost you a bunch of money. And then you end up stalled in the inaction trap. And then more time passes and you're actually further away. Um, also, this is particularly relevant for would-be property buyers, which is where you see people building up big deposits. Um, they're sitting on the sidelines and that opportunity, that can be costing you in terms of opportunities. The But... Really, I, the way I see it, the opportunity is for investors that you make smart choices and get your money actually working hard and growing for you. So the actions there um, to to you know put this to work, I suppose, is to educate yourself. Really understanding that everything has their pros and cons. Every investment option has risk attached to it. Buying shares has risk attached to it. Buying property has risk attached to it. Buying crypto has risk attached to it. Doing nothing has risk attached to it as well. So understand those risks and trade-offs so that you can figure out the right risks for you. Then you want to maximize those so that you ultimately maximize the growth that you get on your money. Last week, I was looking at a piece on um, tech shares getting smashed. And I think this is particularly interesting because off the back of the, and, and not without its pain points, of course, but off the back of the inflationary data that we're seeing that um, with this share market has been on a wild ride, but tech has been hit particularly hard. Now, some people are talking about the fact that tech valuations might've been a little bit overblown coming into the back end of 2021, coming out of COVID. But no matter what you, um, I suppose, you know, the, the, the ultimate driver of this, we are seeing some pretty serious losses. And I'm unfortunately talking to a number of people that have had some pretty huge amounts of wealth on paper that have really um, almost evaporated quite quickly, meaning that they're, they're really not in the position that they thought that they were. So what it means for your money, obviously investments are down um, at this point with, with the tech market being down. For tech workers in particular, with employer share plans, again, that on paper money, you're seeing a significant decline with that. 
But for all investors, tech companies and, and the big global companies, they, these are the biggest global investments out there. You think if you're Apple, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, like these are giants in the market. So anyone that's got a diversified investment portfolio that has access to international shares, it's going to have a huge exposure to tech and they're going to be uh, riding the wave with tech over the next little bit. The frustration is, <clears throat> excuse me, the lack of predictability and um you know, it's never good seeing your your investments go backwards. But the opportunity is that everything is now on sale. Uh, all of these companies that were good companies before and they're good companies now, they're now trading for much lower prices than what we're seeing in the recent past, which means that there's a big opportunity there for, for investors, you know, the right investors with the right strategy to take advantage and make a bunch of money. The actions here, though, um, to do this and do it in a smart way is to understand your risks and make sure that your investment game plan is rock solid. Then put yourself in a position to take good action. Um, everything is moving quite quickly here. So I'd say that, you know, you don't want to wait too long. You potentially miss the opportunity there. One other interesting thing that I've been looking at in the last week has been um, the big banks in Australia. They're talking about the fact that they're set to pay even higher dividends. And what is driving this is, and what's actually going on, is that the increases to interest rates actually fatten the bank's profit margins. And they're tipped to enter what some people are calling a Goldilocks period for investors where they're making more money doing the same business. Obviously, there's been a lot of activity in the property market in Australia as well, which is um, which is driving some potential opportunity. And it means that more profit is available to distribute to investors. The banks pay those nice frank dividends as well. So nice and tax effective for their investors too. The frustration though, I think with this one is that if you don't understand the markets, it can all seem like noise that's really, really hard to, to make sense of. The other thing is that sectors that do like last year we're looking at tech was massively in favor and people were shying away from the more um, traditional investments like banking and finance. But it is like it's like uh, it's like good fashion that it comes comes back around as well. So trying to figure out when is the right time to be moving between these is, is really hard and stressful and potentially can be costly if you're not getting it right as well. But the opportunity is that for investors, you can make a bunch of money by investing smart. I'm a big fan of investing in the market, you know, passive index type funds. They track the market overall. What that gives you is that for investors, you're um, you don't have to worry about which sectors are going to perform best in any given year because you've always got access to the sectors that perform well. And when when companies, how an index works is that it, uh, the market index is relative to the size of the company. So if a company starts small but then starts performing really well, it ends up increasing in size within your portfolio. It means that you're getting all of the exposure and all of the good juice of the market, but without having to stress yourself out and trying to figure out the time and potentially getting it wrong making mistakes and costing you money. So the actions here is that you've got to know that the market is the market and opportunities are coming around all the time. What you don't want to do is let headlines or or fear or greed um, push you just into the false thinking that you're you know an expert that can just pick the ideal times and get in and out and make a bunch of, of money in the process. When you recognize that, you can make more sensible investment decisions that are going to end up giving you better results. One opportunity that I'm seeing for investors out there as well is around cryptocurrency investments becoming more accessible. Um, I was reading about two new crypto ETFs which are coming out to launch on the ASX uh, rival stock market index, basically the, the competitor of the Australian Stock Exchange, um, CBOE, that they're tracking the price. One's tracking the price of Bitcoin, the other is tracking the price of Ether which um, means that you can get access to crypto and the crypto space with um, a much easier and with some regulatory protection. Um, what the, the frustration is that it avoids the difficulty of trying to figure out how to access crypto and some of the risks that come with different platforms and trading and security. And we've all seen those nightmare stories about people that have lost money as a result of um, them working off unsafe platforms or getting hacked or having issues around that as well. The opportunity is getting access to this sector, which has increased by like 133,000% over the last decade or so. Um, 
and potentially making some money in the process. Tread carefully though, because crypto is not for everybody. And even for um, investors, it's, you know, you want to be strategic in terms of how it's actually fitting into your portfolio so you can sleep at night. But um, to take action here, it's about understanding if and where crypto fits for you, the risks that come with this, the risk that comes with these new ETFs, as well as the risks of crypto more generally, and make sure that your plan is solid before you jump in. Now, I've also been seeing a bunch of property news, obviously, with the interest rates, inflation rates, and all of this stuff in, in their um, headlines. And I thought it was interesting to unpack one, one real, uh, one of the points talks to a real frustration that I'm seeing from people around um, the potential economic headwinds that are creating a lot of uncertainty. And there are four key things that are happening in the next four weeks, basically in the next month before the federal, um, federal election. Inflation data coming through. Um, we just saw that release last week, 5.1% uh, record highs there. Rising interest rates, wage growth, um, and the unemployment. These are all going to have a really big impact on the economy, the property market, and the share market, which means that for investors, it's really like uh, on, on the wire. This matters because if the outcomes are good of this data, of this reporting, then that's going to be good for you. But if they're not, then it's potentially a problem. The frustration is that the uncertainty puts doubt in the mind of investors and not sure what to do. But the opportunity is that if you're smart about how you plan, you can capitalize on this uncertainty. And it's really the downturns that make that make millionaires there. What you want to be doing is understanding your options and the risk and how you can manage them and then taking action. Something else in when it comes to property that you should be across is the um, the variance between uh, house prices and pro and apartment price growth over the last little bit. I was looking at some really interesting stats around. You know, we're seeing suburbs in Sydney like North Ride that have gone up twenty nine percent in the year ended to the thirty first of March for houses, but the apartment prices only grew by sixty percent in the same time. Uh, Homebush, 29% versus 7% for apartments. In Pennant Hills, houses went up 24%. Unit prices were flat. And in Melbourne, the, the, the story is very much the same. We saw Essendon North was up 19% um, for houses while apartments fell by 1%. Canterbury increased for houses of 14% while units dipped by 4%. Hawthorne East, houses up 9.6%, but it was a 6% fall in unit prices. So what that means is that if you're if you're a property owner, this has a huge impact on your equity value. If you want to buy a property on the flip side, it's really going to be a big driver of your strategy. What is it that you're trying to do? What what is which one makes the most sense for you? The frustration I think for for buyers is the lack of affordability for properties, but for apartment owners, it's really the lack of growth. What the opportunity is, though, I think is that the on both sides, that there's an opportunity with apartments that are potentially undervalued, meaning that it's easier to get into the market. There's been slower growth. Um, you can yeah, potentially take advantage there. For houses, this sort of talks to the real supply and demand issues that we're, you know, we're seeing these forecasts of the property market dipping. But for, for areas and property types that have limited supply, the price values are very, very well supported. So it means that you've got an opportunity to grow your wealth there. The actions are Plan smart, and particularly for first home buyers, you want to be ready to, um, to, to to take action and have a solid plan in place so that you can move when the time is right for you. Another interesting opportunity, I think, for investors is around the talk on fixing interest rates and whether now is the perfect opportunity to fix your mortgage. Um, this, you know, is driven by the fact that interest rates are on the way up. It's almost certain, um, seeming highly likely that it's going to happen uh, at the next RBA meeting, if not shortly after, and potentially significantly higher as well. There was uh, just had a family member who was talking to about property in New Zealand. They're seeing mortgage interest rates of like five and a half percent for variable rates at the moment, and fixed rates are even higher, which is um, pretty staggering and, and potentially, a, you know, an impact here. What what that means for your money is that um, the, the higher interest rates are going to drive up your mortgage costs and slow down property growth, but it will also likely the higher interest rates will, will slow down economic growth in your share market. But there's an opportunity there if you're smart about variable and fixed in your splits that you can make it easy to achieve what you want to achieve with property without costing you as much and in a smoother way. Opportunity is... Um, you know, fixed rates and beating the banks is really, really tricky. 
But fixed rates do give you a lot of certainty. Variable rates are significantly cheaper at the moment as well. And fixed rates have risen a lot based on anticipation of the, of the interest rate rises that are coming very soon. So it, what it means, and in terms of taking action here, you need to be really smart. You know, do you look at the fixed rates and the variable rates and how they stack up? But what does it mean for your money? Can you sustain higher interest rates? Can you afford to lock in? If you pay a slightly higher price now, how much does it cost um, when you get, uh, how long is it going to take you to repay that money over time? And what does that actually mean? And then you make an objective assessment because it's easy to get caught in the emotion and think, oh, yeah, I want this or this or this feels better or this feels more comfortable. But the reality is it should be driven by the numbers. My final news story for this week is one area that I'm seeing smart investors doing well in at the moment is where um, the, the premium suburbs are now coming back into reach uh, for first home buyers. And this is driven by the fact that the price cap for the first home loan deposit scheme is increasing from the 1st of July. So I've been talking to a bunch of people that have been really smart and strategic about where, what, you know, what sorts of properties they can access and where so that they can access this scheme, which means that you can have a lower deposit, avoid lenders mortgage insurance. And like in Sydney, the um, the price cap is increasing from 800 to 900,000, which is a really significant increase. Um, it means that you can get more affordably into the property market in these areas. And it also means that um, uh, it's it's going to have an impact on market activity. And I think you really need to be careful with the false economies that can be created by some of these incentive schemes that people got a few more bucks to play with can have an upward impact on property prices. Um, but look, it gets through the frustration that saving a property deposit is really tough going. Many suburbs are still quite hard to get into. And the opportunity is that with flat apartment growth that we've been seeing in the increasing caps, it's more people can get into the market um, as long as you're smart and the actions here, um, understand if this is right for you, it's certainly not something that's right for everybody, but if you're going to do, um, go down this path, you want to plan smart. If you're thinking about getting into the market and you think you might be able to access, understand if now is the very right time, or if you should be waiting till after the 1st of July, if it's going to make things easier, it means that you can keep more of your cash savings of your emergency fund, which can be quite helpful as well. And beware of those false economies that can cost you. Guys, I hope you found that helpful. I will catch you next time. Bye for now.